Welcome to day two of the America's Health Ethics Virtual Forum. My name is Andrew Blasey, Technical Secretariat for this event and Director of Kroll & Mooring International, joining you from Washington, D.C. We welcome you back to the largest gathering ever held in the Americas focused on reinforcing ethics and health. With nearly 1,000 delegates joining from across the region, from Canada to Chile, and representing all aspects of healthcare and the health economy, from diverse government agencies to civil society, including patients and healthcare professionals, to the private sector. Building on yesterday's numerous announcements and discussions, today we are going to delve even deeper into what stakeholders can do together to reinforce ethics and health as we look ahead. Before we begin today's program, I have two logistical reminders. First, to listen to the forum's remarks in English, Portuguese, or Spanish, please use the interpretation button which is located at the bottom of your Zoom screen and select the language you prefer. Second, in the event that you become disconnected for any reason today or are having trouble with your calendar link for this event, you can quickly rejoin the forum directly from the, from the event's virtual website. A live link has been activated there to make it easy for you to access today's program. With that said, let's absolutely begin today's session. I'd now like to turn the floor over to Mr. Nacho Abia. Chief Executive Officer for the Americas and Chief Operating Officer Worldwide for Olympus Corporation, as well as a member of the Board of Directors of the Advanced Medical Technology Association, Advimed, who will introduce today's opening keynote speaker. Mr. Abia, it's wonderful to see you and the floor is yours. Thank you, Andrew. And good morning participants to the second day of the Americas Health Ethics Virtual Forum. Today's sessions are all geared up to help us delve deeper into the many important aspects and stakeholder perspectives in fostering ethics and integrity across the region's health systems. As the Chief Executive Officer for the Americas of Olympus Corporation, and as a member of the Advanced Medical Technology Association, or ADVOMED, Board of the Directors, I've seen the role that sounds ethics plays in driving patient center healthcare is one of the largest components of our economy, but perhaps the only component whose success underpins all others. Sound ethical behavior in our health systems also underpins national economic growth and sustainability. Now, perhaps more than ever, we need all our stakeholders to work together to uplift best practices. From the private sector's implementation of high standard codes of conduct, to government embrace of good regulatory practice, as well as informers and procurement regimes that put ethical businesses first. Since the 2018 Summit of the Americas in Peru, we are thrilled to report that the Inter-American Coalition for Business Ethics in the medical technology sector has achieved universal code of ethic adoption by every medical technology industry association in the Western Hemisphere. I'm honored to introduce this morning keynote tech speaker, Mauricio Claver Caron, president of the Inter-American Development Bank, or IDB. Mauricio and the IDB are stalwart champions of efforts to elevate ethics and integrity, as well as good regulatory practices across the region's health system. Elected to lead the IDB nearly one year ago, he was openly embraced the role of civil society and the private sector to work closely with governments in achieving these goals. And sure enough, with this inclusive posture, great progress has and will continue to be made. The medtech sector is honored to support this effort. Prior to his elections to the IDB, Mr. Claver Caron served as Deputy Assistant to the President of the United States and Senior Director for Western Hemisphere Affairs at the National, National Security Council. In this capacity, he was the U.S. President's Principal Advisor on issues related to the region. During his tenure, Mr. Caron conceptualized a whole-of-government economic growth initiative, America Crescent, or growth in the Americas. And also spearheaded the first White House-led Western Hemisphere Strategic Framework for U.S. Interagency Policy Guidance and Development. Mr. Claver Caron also served as the United States Executive Director at the International Monetary Fund and Senior Advisor for International Affairs at the U.S. Department of the Treasury, where he was a Principal Policy Advisor to the Secretary of the Tre Treasury on geopolitical, national security, and economic issues. Mauricio. We are honored to have you speak with us today, and thank you for your leadership. The stage is yours. 
Muy buenos días y gracias Nacho por su amable presentación y por su liderazgo en Olympus Corporation of the Americas. Así como en... Good morning and thank you Nacho for your kind introduction for your leadership with the Olympus Corporation. It's an honor for me to begin today's session with the name of the Inter American Development Bank and the Americas Business Dialogue that has played a central role in working with the region's governments, private sector and civil society to strengthen investment and promote sustainable and inclusive economic growth. Business ethics and integrity are fundamental in all sectors of the economy, including health, and the IDB is committed to working with the public and private sectors to advance this agenda. We need a transparent governance and context to achieve sustainable economic growth and increase productivity as our region continues to grapple with the COVID-19 pandemic and the restoration of essential health services and, of course, economic recovery. The problems of integrity and accountability require a multi-level approach that involves the collective actions of governments, the private sector, civil society, international institutions, and to address the roots of corruption through global, regional, and national initiatives. To be able to achieve these goals requires that the public and private sectors collaborate, agreeing on the importance of maintaining the highest standards of ethics and integrity that will guide their actions. During their meeting in Lima in 2018, the heads of state of the Americas committed to precisely this approach and agreed, in quote, to promote codes of conduct for public servants that contain high standards of ethics, probity, integrity, and transparency, and to encourage the private sector to develop similar codes of conduct. Corruption is a complex problem that threatens access to healthcare equity and outcomes. Healthcare leaders and citizens in all countries increasingly recognize the pernicious effects of corruption and the need for action. Efforts to tease apart the specific problems of corruption in the health sector and to identify and understand its root causes can help us meet this difficult challenge. By applying theory to local realities, carefully studied by all, we can together design more effective programs to minimize risks, alleviate pressures, and strengthen resistance to corruption. Similarly, the dialogue also suggested, in, in quote, to encourage the private sector to adopt comprehensive mechanisms to protect integrity, including corporate codes of conduct. Here at IIDB, we are working and will continue to work closely with key actors in the region to highlight best practices and build capacity where it is most needed. This includes not only the adoption and implementation of the codes of conduct that we will obviously continue talking about today, but it also includes promoting integrity in public procurement, as well as eliminating corruption by adopting good practices in transparency and regulatory convergence. In fact, we have provided financial resources and are implementing a technical assistance project to help countries in the region develop corporate, general, and sectoral codes of conduct to increase the capacity of the public sector to promote transparency and integrity in the private sector. And true to the need to work together, we are doing this in partnership with ADMAMED, and for example, collaborating with the National Confederation of Private Businesses Institutions in Peru. We have also developed and launched in several countries of the region a tool we call Map of Investments that allows citizens to monitor in real time how and in what the government invests its resources. It also provides them with quality information that supports their decision making and contributes to improve the efficiency of their investments. This tool also helps companies increase their competitiveness by operating in an open information environment. MAPA Investments is the result of our transparency fund contributed by Norway, Sweden, Italy, and Canada, as well as the private sector. And here, Microsoft has been a key partner in providing the technology provided by this platform. In Paraguay and other countries, MAPA Investments has incorporated modules on COVID-19 to track public spending, which allows the citizens to access information related to health spending, infrastructure, such as hospitals, for example, and the purchase of medicines. The new integrity formula is access to information through digital technologies. I am proud that quality of institutions, transparency and integrity are central and cross-cutting issues for the IDB group. This is clearly outlined in our institutional strategy, also in the policy recommendations and the action plan for growth in the Americas and in the sector framework for transparency, integrity, among others. And of course, is our roadmap to accelerate the region's socioeconomic recovery, which is Vision 2025, called Reinvesting in the Americas. 
in our 2025 vision, we have identified priority areas to accelerate the region's recovery and make it more competitive, more equitable and better equipped to face the different current and future challenges. The priority areas are the integration of regional value chains, support for small and medium sized enterprises, promoting digitization that fosters competitiveness and innovation, driving diversity and gender inclusion and action against climate change. To achieve this vision, it is indispensable to overcome corruption and lack of transparency in all areas of institutions. We all agree that the quality of institutions and transparency are cross-cutting issues and fundamental to democratic governance, effective public service delivery, and the establishment of a business climate that encourages investment and supports private sector development. In cooperation with the dialogue, we also do important work on the adoption of good regulatory practices, including the medical device area of the healthcare sector. Our Latin America and Caribbean region is exceptional with dynamic, diverse entrepreneurial citizens who are eager to improve their economies and their societies. And to truly empower investment and sustainable economic growth for our citizens, we must prioritize all efforts to root out corruption and uphold integrity. And unfortunately, we know what we must, must, must be done. So now it's time to move to action, the time to deliver together the change we seek. This is the first event of the America's Healthcare Ethics Virtual Forum, and it brings together the right people at the right time to generate significant results. So I reiterate that you can count on us, on the IDB and on the America's Business Dialogue to continue advancing ethics, transparency and business integrity in all sectors, including healthcare. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, President Claver Caron and Mr. Abia for your opening remarks, which are truly a perfect transition to our next session, where I'm honored to facilitate a discussion with two leaders of, on the Inter-American Development Bank's ten technical cooperation engaged together to promote codes of ethics. For this discussion, I am joined by Roberto De Michele, Principal Specialist for Modernization of the State at the IDB and a well-respected leader in strengthening ethics and transparency across the region. I'm also joined by Mr. Osco Caipo, one of the most prominent business leaders in Peru as president of the National Confederation of Private Industry, otherwise known as CONFIP, as you heard in the IDB president's remarks, the leader of KPMG in Peru and co-chair of the America's Business Dialogues Transparency and Regulatory Working Group. Roberto and Oscar, it's a pleasure to see you both again. Thank you for being with us today. Let's delve right into the conversation. And I'm gonna start with you, Oscar. Could you please share your views with everyone in attendance today on the importance of collective action to fostering ethics and integrity, as well as to combat corruption, of course. How um, has your own experience informed the way you approach such collective action and initiatives in Peru or elsewhere? Thank you, Andrew. Um, uh, first, for the invitation to participate in this in, in this event and, and share uh, our our experience uh, in Peru and in Confiep. And I also want to thank uh, the the IDB and Roberto for their their support and technical assistance along the process that we are going through. And also thank uh, IDB President Mauricio Claver Serron. Uh, Caron for, for his initial words and call to action. Uh, so, so Andrew, uh, right to, to your question, um, as you might know, Peru uh, has been going through uh, some period of instability. And, and one of the main uh, problems that we had to, to deal with is, is the lack of ethics and, and corruption. And this, this has been ingrained uh, for many years um, at, at all national levels. No, this is not only for big business and, and, and for big uh, private and public relationship, but this is also in the daily life uh, experience of, of the citizens that they need to deal with, with the bureaucracy and, 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 and state uh, that requires in some cases, certain level of facilitation payments to be able to operate normally. So this is, this goes uh, beyond the, the compliance and has become a, a, in a certain way, a cultural issue. Also, so, so this is a problem 
uh, not, not only of, 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 of the big leagues and, and the, the big public and private, but it's a, a problem uh, that, uh, from, from all from all aspects of society. So, so that's why we need to approach it in, in, in such a way. Um, we, we, we can uh, say that uh, because of this reason, the private sector has been impacted significantly you know, in, a, in our reputation and it's been questioned uh, in, in every time that we raise our hand to say something, then we are accused of being corrupt. So, so, so we, we lost credibility and that's, that's a big issue with the importance of the private sector in, in the whole lives. No? So, and, and we believe that one of the root causes of why Peru is going through so many development issues and questions about the model of development that, that, that has ended in, in a government uh, that, that has uh, different, different ways of thinking of how we should achieve that development is a corruption that had not allowed the funds to go in the right direction and, and solve the, 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 the social gaps in health, education, among, among others. So it's, it's very important that we deal with this and the private sector is, 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 is playing a leading role uh, and is very committing uh, to make sure that we can generate impact. Uh, but be, before we generate impact on the social uh, dimension, we need to make sure that there's no questioning on our ethics uh, behaviors, no, and our responsible business conduct. So, we what we are seeing is that uh, there's there's significant uh, uh, initiatives that require this collective collective action, no, and and that the main objective is to regain trust among all stakeholders. No? So, for example, there's a project that I I really like to to highlight uh, from time to time. Uh, it's being led by USAID, no? and, and it's called a Transparent Public Investment, no? and have different dimensions. It's a very comprehensive project to promote integrity. But this is, uh, we are collaborating with, with this project through uh, Entrepreneurs for Integrity. I'm also president of that organization, and CONFIEP has become an, an ally as well of the project. But what they are doing is promoting integrity promoting uh, preventive uh, corruption systems in five regions in Peru, not only in Lima, in the capital, uh, but also for medium business in the construction value chain, which was one of the sectors uh, uh, where, where the problem uh, has, has generated uh, a lot of impact. No? So um, here we have the collective, the collective action of, of uh, sorry, let me, the collective actions of many players, the private, the public, the Secretaría de Integridad Pública from Peru. We have the American Chamber of Commerce uh, getting involved, the Chamber of Constructions at the regional level, the regional government leaders, you know, and of course, the, the small and medium businesses from the construction value chain working together to generate consciousness of the need of change and embracing integrity, ethics, and anti-corruption systems to make sure that we start changing things. So for me, collective actions and, and, and examples like that are, are really important to highlight. And one more, of course, is what we are doing from the American Business Dialogues. And this is space for advocacy in the region led by the private and facilitated by the IDB uh, working in the Transparency and Regulatory Convergence Working Group, we are promoting also at this collective level actions to improve ethics and anti-corruption measures within the region. Yeah, thank, thank you so much for that, Oscar. And I look forward in the course of our discussion today to getting into some more details around some of the good work that, that the America's Business Dialogue, the IDB, and CONFIP have been working on, but your comments are quite insightful from the standpoint of not only sharing specific examples that others can learn from that you've cited, but also your emphasis on process and systems and how that can't really be ignored. You have to delve into those details. Roberto, same question to you. You know, how, how can you share your views on the importance of collective action and how have your own experiences informed the way you approach such initiatives? Um, sure. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you for the invitation. And uh, 
congratulations on a terrific uh, forum uh, and a great level of uh, discussion on a very significant topic. Uh, I, I, you know, difficult to, to bring anything new after what uh, my president and Oscar have just said about the importance of this topic. Just let me add a couple of, a couple of things. Uh, we all need trust to, to develop. We need, the government needs trust to work and the private sector depends on trust for commercial economic interactions among the private sector and between the private sector and the government. Corruption, lack of transparency, and lack of integrity uh, divorce that trust, uh, consumes trust. So the big challenge of collective action is how to, how to counteract that process by producing trust. So the whole framework behind the America's Business Dialogue Working Group on, on Transparency and Integrity and the project we are developing with Confiep in Peru is about rebuilding trust, producing trust. And the way you produce trust is basically by aligning rules with behavior. You can have the best rules or the best codes of ethics, but if you behave differently, people are going not, not only going to trust, will not trust you, will not trust your rules. So the challenge that CONFIEP and others are leading in Peru uh, with our very happy and glad support is an effort to rebuilding trust. Uh, it, it is not easy. It is a challenge. I, will, I, I don't want to sugarcoat this problem because it takes a lot of effort. And Oscar is, is, is very honest in painting the real picture. Uh, some, some people, some countries are not starting from the best position. But it's never late to take this challenge. And it's very important that we do take this challenge. The other thing that I believe we bring into this conversation is that uh, we, we are stronger if we cooperate with others. Uh, so uh, as Oscar mentioned, we are coordinating with USAID, we're coordinating with other stakeholders from the multilateral uh, environment, but also from the private sector in Peru and the public sector in Peru. At the end, I think these are some elements for a successful recipe in the long run. It is not a sprint, it is a marathon, but it's, it takes step, step by step to recreate and reconstruct trust in the private sector and trust between the private sector and government. Yeah, thank you, Roberto. You know, I think all of us and many in the audience will be well aware of the phrase, right? It, it, takes, it takes a long time to earn trust, but trust can be eliminated very quickly. I think your comments take us a step further, and I really liked what you said. You kind of put, you, you, you characterize trust as in the form of capital, right? Trust, the point of it is trust doesn't exist, as you said, or cannot be produced when you have a disconnect between rules and standards, whether it's something enforced by the public sector through the government or voluntary, right? Which we talked about through things like codes of conduct and the behavior itself. And this puts a huge amount of focus on how do we make sure that, that, that in order to produce that trust capital, right, that we're, we're achieving uh, initiatives that aim to get at that linkage. So that's very insightful, Roberto. Oscar, I'd like to turn the floor back to you. And let's, you started to talk a little bit about what CONFIP is doing today to advance collective actions and other initiatives to foster ethics and integrity and corruption prevention. Can you tell us a little bit more about what CONFIP is doing and kind of get into some of the nitty gritty for members of the audience who may be looking to improve the collective actions they're a part of or to start new ones? Sure, Andrew. And, and um, I think Roberto's comments were, were right on point and it's at the center of, of our challenge and what we are trying to achieve and overcome here in, in Peru and in CONFIEP. No? I think it's important to, to first for the audience to understand what is CONFIEP. CONFIEP is, is, is a business union, a business association uh, conformed of, of 22 business unions in 10, in 10 uh, different business sectors that includes that they go from agribusiness, banking, insurance, uh, mining, oil and gas, energy, the fishing industry, cement industry, pharmaceuticals, retail shopping, uh, foreign train, media. And we also have uh, one of our 22 uh, members are the small and medium business. Um, so, so we have thousands of business associations associated to the business, 22 uh, business associations as well. So. 
we represent uh, in our sectors around 75% of GDP in Peru. So it's very representative, very diverse, and in, in different levels of development. So this is quite a challenge to achieve. And, and the, 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 the problem is that the loss of trust is a consequence of the bad behavior of a few that have been generalized uh, as, as, as an image of the private sector uh, for those actions, but also for some groups of people that uh, want to see confrontation between public and private uh, or, or, or workers and, 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 uh, and business. So we, we have a challenge that we generate not only the, the, a lot of, 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 of uh, um, uh, contribution to the GDP, but also we have a lot of positive impact in the country development and, and, and welfare of the people. However, that is not recognized because of the lack of trust. So if we don't solve the trust issue and the integrity issue, the, our, our contributions, what we want to achieve in a country is not, is not seen, it, 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 as it doesn't exist. So that's why we, we look for, for, for an organization that will really help us uh, develop this, and we found a, a great partner in the IDB, and especially in Roberto that is leading this. What we're doing, uh, our main goal is to re rebuild trust, uh, and and to achieve this uh, with the technical assistance of the IDB. What we're doing is we are uh, reviewing our cost of code of ethics. Uh, we are raising the bar in terms of uh, our our integrity standards in different dimensions of integrity, and, and we are implementing an integrity compliance systems that include policies in, in such areas as anti-corruption, conflict of interest, transparency and disclosure of information, antitrust and free competition, human rights, sustainability and environmental protection, and anti-money laundering. No? So it's very comprehensive. So we are approaching this in a in a in a phased way with, with developing a roadmap prioritizing some areas to start with uh, which are some urgent matters and what we are going to do is basically by reviewing and generating a new standard at confiab level that's going to drill down to the 22 business associations that we represent uh, and to start the process we are going to be signing a business integrity pact no, that we are committed with and that we will we, we launch how this is going to be deployed uh, across uh, all our business associations. And our system is, is, is going to be alive. You know? It's not only uh, reviewing the, the code of conduct. So the IDB is, has been bringing some uh, very interesting ideas. I come from the sector of compliance, so I know, but they brought some ideas to implement mechanisms mechanisms to ensure compliance and how we keep updating the system as well uh, and also some external views to monitor with periodic evaluations and also a consultation but and, but uh, that includes as well a whistleblower system so so we are basically opening uh, ourselves to to the general public that that uh, and, and the scrutiny and monitoring of the general public to make sure that what we are committed to in our code of conduct, we are really living and practicing them and that we are not deviating uh, for those. No? So thanks to, to, to this initiative, we expect to, to regain the trust and legitimacy that we require as the business sector with society and, and claim that role that we really need uh, as an engine of economic and, and social development. That's really terrific to hear, Oscar, especially about the comprehensive nature of this type of partnership. And, and so thank you for sharing some of those details. Roberto, same question over to you from the IDB perspective. You know, Oscar's just sort of given a nice overview of some of the key areas of the partnership, but whether we're talking about this particular partnership with Confip and the bank or more broadly, could you share a little bit more about what the bank is doing in terms of collective action or other initiatives to prevent corruption? Uh, sure, Andrew. Uh, first of all, let me just add one thing. It, it, it is a terrific experience to work with CONFIEP in Peru. We, we are also learning by working with them. 
Uh, we are very much aware of one thing that Oscar just, just mentioned. Uh, what, what we are helping CONFIEP develop in Peru within a general framework will probably be different if we, will, if we do this in Honduras or in Panama. And why is that? Because every country and every context is different. Uh, of course, in every country you have a health sector and you have an infrastructure sector, but at the end of the day, the way we focus our work is contextual. We want to make sure that this works in Peru, and therefore, once this works in Peru, others may learn and ad adopt an experience according to their own country. So my first comment is that we do not have a one-size-fits-all approach. We are pretty much aligned with the context in which we're working. The second one is, is that, as, as President Claver Carone mentioned, all of this is part of our of our approach within the America's Business Dialogue and the Transparency Fund of the IDB. So in, in other countries, we are helping, uh, for example, in Panama, we're about to kickstart a similar experience with the banking sector and with Superintendencia de Bancos. Uh, we had had some previous experience to develop anti-corruption regulations for the private sector in Ecuador and in other countries. Now we're moving to include the whole sector in Panama. So beyond what, and this is something very important that Oscar just mentioned, beyond what is a legal requirement in your country, what else you need to do as a private sector entity, as, as, a, as a union, to make sure that you are a step ahead of the law, a step ahead of the requirements that we all have to comply with as business people, as citizens, or as public officials. So one additional key element here is we need to make sure that those standards are have as a basis, as a starting point, we will all comply with them. The second one, a very important Oscar mentioned is, and is also part of our approach, uh, this is not carved in stone, this is dynamic. It needs to adjust, it needs to be reviewed, and there's absolutely no country that I am aware of that has not had some sort of issue or scandal or problem. The key here is that we need to learn from those situations and make sure that we take the lessons from those cases and transform them into a way in which we try not to happen again. We try to prevent those issues from happening again. The third uh, point I would like to mention as part of our experience in other regions and in other parts of Latin America and the Caribbean is, is that it is very important to bring everyone into the conversation. No one here has the final answer to these problems because as Oscar and Mauricio just said, these are very complex problems. So there's not something like the, the ultimate response to all our, our ethics uh, doubts or challenges. That is why, and this is something very important Oscar mentioned, our proposal in CONFIEP, with CONFIEP and in other countries is we need to have consultation mechanisms to make sure that before something is, is happening or before a decision is made, people have the best possible advice on the course of action. That can help people avoid and companies avoid situations in which they do not want to find themselves in. Of course, there are some clear cut examples. Uh, it is absolutely forbidden, it is illegal to pay a bribe, but there are other situations that are a bit more complicated and having a mechanism to provide advice to those situations is probably as important as having a rule that says you should not do this or you should not do that. So those are three elements that we are seeing in the rest of the region. And again, as, as, um, as Mauricio mentioned, it is very important to have not only the support of the member countries of the Transparency Fund, but support of the private sector like Microsoft that is helping us with MAP Inversiones that helps bring full transparency to public investment with the use of technology. Yeah, that's that's really terrific, Roberto. Thank you and Oscar for for sharing what what exactly it is that you're working on. Let's let's maybe t delve a little bit deeper, if you both don't mind, in terms of, you know, let let's talk about what works and what doesn't work. You know, I think where where the rubber meets the road from your own experience, as you look at collective actions that may have happened in the past or things that are ongoing presently. What are some of the key attributes that you can say makes these initiatives successful? And what are those where they just don't succeed, you know, in achieving their ultimate objective? So maybe Oscar, we'll start with you. Yes, Andrew, and, and that's that's a, a, a great question. 
Um, we, we, we have several initiatives go, going through right now uh, as we speak. One of them I, I already mentioned through, through Entrepreneurs for Integrity. Um, what, what we are promoting is um, that, that uh, co uh, companies implement uh, the anti-corruption preventing model and they certificate it, uh, not only for legal uh, uh, coverage, let's say, uh, but also to, to make sure that this is well known uh, and publicized uh, in, in, with their stakeholders and, and communicated uh, broadly and people understand that this is a company that acts with integrity. You know? And uh, what, what we learned here is that um, we, we started with big business and, and we designed a very robust and, and demanding in terms of, of complexity and their components in, in, in the model. Uh, so, so that was not available for the medium and small business. And this is a problem at, at, at all levels. So we learned that we, we needed to, to have segment the market uh, and then make sure that we have uh, uh, certifications from, from large, medium, and small business. So we did that uh, along the way. Uh, we also understood that this is not a problem of, of Lima, the capital. Uh, and that's why we partner with USA to, to take it at a national level uh, and, and, and that also help to make sure that the, the problem is so so large that this, has, this needs to be scalable. No, so I would say that that's that's a, a key learning. We need to think how this is going to scale up, you no, know, and and make sure that we really create an impact. Um, so uh, that's that's something that, um, that 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 we learned. The other thing is that we we, we learned that if we as as businesses, the business sector, start raising the bar in terms of integrity and the way we act, and we don't see the same level of change at the public. A sector, the government, different entities side, we, we have a, a really a problem. No, then you have the justification why you need to break your own code of conduct because you need to operate or do business. No, so what we decided is that we needed to to promote a whistleblowing, and and we partner with the national controllership to create a mechanism that has kind of a fast track. And, and, and we started promoting uh, people to start uh, uh, raising uh, the, the hand when they find an issue along the way. You know? So th this, this has been a very interesting project, how it has evolved. We have another initiative from the private sector, which is called the Anti-Corruption Business Council. We have different business associations being part of it. I'm sitting at the board as well. And, and the problem there was that we, we were doing things among the businesses and nobody knew about it. So communication is critical. So it's not enough that we know that we are acting with integrity and following our code of ethics. It's very important that this is the general public has to know this. So we started different campaigns in social media to give more visibility. No, so, and, and, and then we also learned that we needed to go beyond business. No, so we needed to 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 do some advocacy and and and, and generate um, awareness that some of the areas where the public sector, the government needs to to make change as well. So at the CPA, we we amplified our scope of action to make sure that we raise the hand when we see something on the other side that also needs to improve to make sure that things become effective. Yeah, thank you, Oscar. That that's great. Really helpful insights, Roberto. Same question to you. You know, where the rubber meets the road. Where have you seen things go well? What are some of the key traits of those? And when things aren't going as well, what are some sort of key um, insights you've gleaned from those? Sure. Um, and let, let me bring examples for our concrete experience with Confiep. Um, first, um, Oscar is actually the spearhead of a larger commitment from the private sector. Uh, I, before this program was launched with Confiep, we had meetings with, uh, the, with the shareholders of Confiep, with the companies that are part of, the, of Confiep, and they bought in the program. So from day one, there was full support from the board of Confiep. And there's an agreement with the board of Confiep on the components of the program. 
this has been critical. Uh, having the commitment from the top, but also having very open, honest, and candid discussions at that level about what I think is the next element that may help success, which is let's do something, as Oscar says, that raises the bar, but is realistic. We cannot make commitments that we cannot fulfill. That's probably something that if I want to recommend something it, in the sort of in the negative side is do not engage in commitments that you're not ready to, to fulfill. Why is that? Because those kind of decisions may eventually uh, um, um, take away the trust that you're trying to build. On the other hand, as Oscar mentioned, there are several commitments that Oscar mentioned that were not on the table when we started. And this new commitments in terms of human rights, in terms of the environment, in terms of inclusion, those commitments are terribly important, not because of what they say only, but also because of the mechanisms that CONFIEP is developing to make those commitments uh, operation. So here's the second element of success. Make sure that what you decide to do is something that you can achieve. The third element that I think is present in, in a recipe for success is, and this again, I'm, I'm trailing behind Oscar words, is uh, make sure that you reach out to others. Uh, so we are part of this effort, but not we're not the only ones in, behind this effort. So the, the broader the coalition, the broader the conversation, the better. Bring everyone around the table, have open discussions, make sure that people are, are ready to commit. There are uh, many practices, not only between the private sector and the public sector, there are many practices between the private sector that need to change. Uh, and, and in order to get to those practices, you need to make commitments before you start writing the rules and before you start adopting the mechanisms. And in order to do that, and I think it goes back to your, your initial question, and it goes to one of the topics in the panels after our panel is, that is why you need collective action because collective action will help you stabilize those agreements, make sure that those agreements will hold with time. will hold on time on normal times, but also more importantly, will hold in time when you have a crisis. So those are the two scenarios in which you want to test your commitment. In normal times, uh, we all define, but the system should be active and working. And the, the test comes when you have a crisis, when you have an issue, how does the system react? Uh, Perhaps uh, down the road, when, when we kickstart, the, the, we launch the whole system, the, the, the integrity commitment, as Oscar said, we can uh, meet again and uh, share our experience so others can, can learn from us, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you very much, Roberto. So let me let me recap for, for the audience a little bit some of the key things I've just heard in this latest exchange, which, which is tremendously insightful. First, the important comment that Oscar made about public-private alignment. I think that this is really important and something that sometimes in this space we tend not to always see. We see the public sector moving out front without the private sector or vice versa. We see the private sector trying to do something without the buy-in of the right public sector agencies or there are political crosswinds that are interfering with the ability to drive progress. So I think that that's really important in understanding that environment well. And then Roberto, you mentioned a couple of other elements too that I'll recap for the audience. You mentioned the importance of tone at the top and the role of leadership. You talked about the importance of words, right? But also actions. And that's what I suppose we all mean when we say walking the talk, right? Leadership needs to set the tone, but then demonstrate the actions, including through things like mechanisms. You also talked about sticking to the commitments that you make and making the commit commitments that you know are achievable, which I think is very insightful. And then of course, proactive outreach and inclusiveness as a key fundamental pillar of collective action. And then as an ex by extension, creating an avenue for mutual accountability. If there's no mutual accountability, you're then gonna see sort of the, the, how, the, 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 the cards fall down, right? In terms of ultimately failing to live up to the commitment, et cetera. There needs to be an accountability element to this type of collective action. We have about a minute or so left, and I'd like to take the prerogative as the moderator to ask one quick final question to both of you, if that's okay. Can you just in a couple of seconds, maybe 30 seconds or so, just tell us a little bit more about how you think the region is changing in this space, right? Um, and where maybe the needs are greatest, right? You know, as you look holistically. So Oscar, over to you. 
But I think that the region is 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 raising and changing in terms of awareness to start with. So I, I think that uh, uh, this is like 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 some years ago when we talk about uh, 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 gender equality and it took some time to to get there. And now it's it's part of of, of all organizations and all conversations. I think that the the fact that we 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 need to have uh, integrity. Uh, in all organizations, in, in all of ways of life, um, I think it's not in question anymore. No? Uh, however, it is a great challenge because uh, it's not easy to change uh, when when you have been living uh, like that with a lack of integrity or with corruption in, in, in different places or instances of, of life of society for many years. Also, it's good to have that awareness, and I think it's a great start, but I think we still have a long way to go in a region that requires that the, the funds and the initiatives goes directed in the right way to solve the social issues and regain trust. Also, I think we have a great challenge ahead of us. Thank you very much, Oscar. And Roberto, same question to you. How is the region changing? And where do you see some of the greatest needs as we look ahead? Uh, one positive change I see in the region on the private sector side is something that Oscar mentioned and, and is very important. Uh, the integrity and transparency discussion is not a discussion uh, or an issue just for large companies anymore. Uh, we are all concerned about medium and small sized companies making sure that the larger companies can help them join this conversation. And, and this is very important because in our region, uh, small and medium sized firms have a lot of weight in the economy, but sometimes they do not have the capacity or the resources to engage in these programs. I think collective action is bringing that around and helping the smaller companies join this conversation. That is a very positive uh, situation. I, I also uh, I coincide with, with Oscar, uh, but let me put it in a positive way. The, the COVID-19 crisis had, had put on the table the importance of being more accountable, uh, both on the public and the private side. We have a, uh, a fiscal crisis because of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Everyone should be more aware than in any other time that uh, managing public resources with transparency and integrity is of the utmost importance. Otherwise, we will not be able to overcome the challenges of development. Very well said, Roberto and Oscar, both. Thank you so much for your leadership throughout the region and on behalf of this forum's many partners, including the IDB. Um, we really look forward to our continued close collaboration together. So thank you both for your time um, and for your leadership.